what do you look for when you're looking for people that or how, how did you kind of go about you know finding the right people because it's not easy right like yeah so i had a very specific idea that i didn't need somebody who knew property management i needed smart people i felt like i could teach anybody property management but you can't teach somebody how to be smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, if they don't have good work ethic and they're not smart, they're just not a good option. Yeah. But smart people, depending on what their skill set is, then you figure out what department that would translate into yeah. property management. So we manage a little differently than other management companies. We, you, we don't have like a, uh, just this is your property manager and that person does everything for you. We manage in departments. Yeah. So we have a leasing team. We have a couple different maintenance teams, yeah. depending if it's a flip or just something that needs to be fixed for a current tenant, right? You have collections, you have all the different departments that they are focused and they are going to be experts on their trade. Yep. And the negative of that is as the owner, you have to go to not just one person to say, what's up with this? You have to know the different departments, but those departments are experts in their field. Yeah. And they they really learn and, and help grow and uh, management is, is tough yeah. I and mean, it's really hard. So without quality people that really know their department, yeah, you could just do it yourself. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. And I, uh, I would totally agree. It's a great team and the people, uh, obviously, I mean, I know them uh, better than anybody, but just for anyone listening, I, I know you got a lot of out of state buyers that come in and they, you know, someone from California or something, right. And they don't have a team or whatever. I, I would, I would guess if you interviewed smart asset versus some of the other competitors, you'd find, um, a lot of differentiators that, that, you know, that they go above and beyond and are just more of kind of a team family mindset and you guys do things a bit differently. So I'm fortunate because even the stuff that I own with, without you guys with Smart Asset Capital, uh, you know, I get to work with with the team on it, and it's it's been nothing but a great experience. Yep, I agree. What what is your goal for like the management company? I mean, what, what would your goal be for like your the management company, but then also like goals in general? Like, where do you where do you want to where do you want to take this thing? Um, I'm not a very good like write down my goals yeah. kind of person. So I also don't like to put a limitation on it. Yeah. So I just always say more. Yeah. Right. So controlled growth to just keep going. Yeah. Um, I get bored easily. So I want to always try to stay busy yeah. with, with work and, and that will just kind of naturally create, you know, just continued growth. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, say, oh, I want to be at 5,000 units in three years. Yeah, sure. Sounds about right. I mean, yeah. that just, just good, steady growth that just keeps going. Yeah. I like it. Um, okay, switching gears a little bit. The So the premise of the pod, Winning Wealth Podcast, is health, wealth, and happiness, and which we think like being an entrepreneur provides more opportunity to, to grow those fields. So what would you say is your the, the thing you like most about being an entrepreneur, or the biggest benefit you think being an entrepreneur provides? Um, the freedom is, is good. I mean... You, you have the freedom if if you're smart with your time, right? I mean, it's it's not just like, oh, I don't have to work today because I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, it's it's kind of the opposite, and especially at the beginning. I mean, the growing uh, of a business is just, uh, it's, it's hard to explain how hard that is. But then once you are at a point where it it is a little bit more stable until you go and start something different, mm -hmm. but once you're at a point where it is a little stable, that's the best part. I mean, working and and taking care of your clients so that they're happy and you make friends that way. And it's just a, a true win-win is the best reward that I would get. And, but yes, the, the positives are, you, know, oh, you want to go golfing today at two o'clock? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, yeah sure. We can, we can call that work. Yeah. Right. Let's go yeah. golfing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Controlling your schedule, right. It's like, it's so work a couple hours in the morning, go golf, maybe work a couple hours at nighttime. Like, you want to take a couple of days off, go on a trip with the family. Like you got so much more control of your schedule compared to being in a nine to five where it's like you got to be in the office these times. And like, no, if you want to get off early to go golf, it's a big thing. You got to get approved by your boss. And it's for me too, like that's the biggest differentiator I've noticed. It's, it's not a punch in punch out thing, right? So that's where the difference of, 
you know, punching in, punching out, and then you can just turn your brain off at 5.01 yeah. and be done, right? I mean, it's just the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go off in the afternoon or the morning, then you just know, well, your computer works at home just the same way it works in the office. Yeah. So you just got to make up that time. Uh, you want to go out of town, everywhere has Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, just get your three, four hours in and at least don't get too far behind Yeah. to the point of, but again, that's, you could call that a negative as well, where the work never stops. Yeah. So you want to go on vacation. Great. You know, everyone needs the vacation to reset, but unfortunately those emails don't stop coming yeah. in. So I always try to just do at least an hour a day, two hours a day yeah. to minimize and make sure there's no, uh, fires that need to be put out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I got, got one for you. So the, there's this term of like, you've made it right. Like you feel like you've made it. Is there a specific point in your career where you were like, I did it right. Like I've made it set up the life I want, or do you feel like you haven't even gotten there yet? It, it goes back to my, my, all my support, right? Staff, everybody who, who helps and where I can go leave and go do something, whether it is work or fun, but I'm not in the office, I'm not in front of my computer and something just gets done. To me, that was when the light bulb went off of like, oh, that's nice. That's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't need to put out that fire. One of my six people who also put out fires did it for me. I didn't even know about it until it was 100% completed. Yeah. So they took the stress off of me. They took the work off of me. They took the communication with whoever needed to be communicated with off of me completely. So that is the, the one moment I actually do remember is coming home and checking my email at 8 o'clock and seeing an email thread of starting with just a massive problem. And at the end of it, it was 100% solved. And I remember smiling, yeah. just being like, that's really cool. That that's is awesome. Amazing. That's a great example. I agree. Yeah, no, I, I I, mean, I love that. The thing is, they, they say too, the, I don't know who says it, but I've heard a quote or something somewhere like the hallmark of a great leader is that they can basically step away and the business keeps operating. It keeps keeps going. And they're not necessarily needed as needed in the business. They can kind of work strategically on the business. Um, you know, obviously everybody has the stuff that they do day to day to try to move things forward and get shit done. But that's, I mean, it's a great feeling to have, you know, problems get solved without you even knowing about them. If, you know, I think this is common sense, but I look at it in other people that I know, other managers or owners that, need to be in control of everything yeah and uh, that never made sense to me because i actually had a good understanding early on of knowing what you're good at and knowing what you're not good at and getting rid of those things that you're not good at yeah mm -hmm. or especially things that you're not good at and you hate doing yeah and those just fall down at the bottom of your to-do yeah. list so quick yeah and something like oh that can be done tomorrow yeah the things that can be done <laughs> tomorrow they almost never get done yeah. because tomorrow they can be done tomorrow and they just keep getting pushed and pushed. So the sooner you can recognize in yourself what you just aren't good at and what you don't want to do, yeah. get that off your plate. And, and that was the aha moment for me of trusting somebody else to take care of a task. Yeah. That's, that brings up a good point. So like, what is like an example of something you like don't like doing or feel you're not good at and then on the other hand what is an example of something that you feel like you are really good at and you do enjoy doing um so what i am good at and i enjoy doing is talking to a new client so a potential new client uh lead will come in and i like to sell my company yeah. myself right i'm passionate about it they yeah. can they can feel that passion yep and I just feel like I can sell it better than any of my other agents yeah. or any of my other staff. So I keep all of that. Yeah. Um, actually, you're a great example. I'm really good at underwriting properties. I did it well before yeah. you came along. Uh, yeah. But but you do it better than me. Actually, <laughs> you do spend more time doing it, and it. you uh, like it. And yeah. three screens. It, up. Yeah. It's really easy to hit forward, Brock. Yeah. yeah. Look at this, uh, yeah. and then you give me the pretty picture. 
and you just saved me what two three hours of a deep dive underwriting yeah, yeah. so i mean that's a uh, i love doing that it takes a lot of time it does and that's a good point i think in partnerships like it's good to have someone who's has a skill set in something else right and you're better at something so i'd say for that was a good example like for me i like i like being in spreadsheets I like underwriting deals getting into the details and then you're i suck at not getting better at it right but more of the sales side negotiating side like it's not not my strong suit whereas you negotiate for some pretty good deals for us yeah yeah sometimes it's like i'll, I'll make that call yeah <laughs> yeah i think it's fun for you to negotiate uh yeah it is yeah love it i love that that's awesome um what was i gonna say how about somebody that is and because i've, I've heard you say this before too in random times i don't know if it's on the golf course or when but like something along the lines of like anybody that wants to be successful can if if they if they want to bad enough or, or whatever right like what would your tips be for somebody that you know is young and obviously we're in a different climate real estate wise you know uh, investment wise with with low uh, with interest rates and everything right now and demand and supply and demand but like what would your advice be to somebody that's starting out that wants to build a real estate portfolio or build a, a you know a, build a clientele base as an agent or and and be somebody that can you know uh buy a house on a lake and have a boat and a nice car and just a nice you know uh, you know become wealthy <laughs> work harder yeah right so too many people want to be successful and not put in the real time that it takes. Yeah. And I'm not sure most people know what the real time that it takes yeah. actually is. Yeah. And that is something that I'm glad that I that I had yeah. deep down in me. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know that I had it yeah. until your back's up against a wall yeah. and you're too busy. You sold too many deals yeah. and you're growing too fast. Yeah. And I wasn't going to take my foot off the gas yeah. and grow less. It just meant that I had to work harder. Yeah. And and I haven't, you know, I haven't seen that enough in other people. Yeah. They say they want to be successful. They say they want to grow. Yeah. But when it comes down to it, they don't have that extra gear. Yeah. They can't find that that extra gear that you need to find, and you, then you need to actually do it. Yeah. So if you have to stay up all night and work, I was you, gonna say that. you stay up all night and work. Yeah. There's been numerous times, especially back, you know, a few years ago when I remembered, you know, meeting up with you the next day or whatever. And you're like, I just, I didn't sleep at all last night. I literally was in here. I mean, numerous times, at least four or five times. And that was just the times that I was meeting with you on those days. So I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. The kids, uh, you know, kids would give me a little, you know, grief when I don't see them sometimes at night. Yeah. But if, if that's what needs to be done yeah. and you're serious about growing your business and being successful, you have to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's you six o'clock. Yeah. I don't care. It's six o'clock. Yeah. You know, you still have five things on your to-do list. Yeah. You get uh, those things done. Yeah. Otherwise tomorrow you're going to end the day with eight things on your to-do yeah. list and then 15 and yeah. No excuses. No yeah, excuses. I think like, especially with like social media and stuff, right? Like people see, the other side of that where it's like oh you're on vacations all the time and like such an easy life but they don't see the other side of it of like the five years in the beginning or the you know ongoing all-nighters and things you did to get to that point right like it's not just nights and that weekends. doesn't happen overnight right like you got to grind for at least several years like all in to get to that point so now you have more freedom right and you can outsource things you can you know work a little bit less sometimes and still grow the business so i think a lot of people miss that side of you got to go through that stage before you get to this next stage yeah, no, for sure.